Hey there, friends. How's it going? Happy Friday to you. Um, in this lesson, I want to try something new. I'm going to do a bit of a practice with me or a practice session where I'm going to sort of show you one of my practice drills that I've been doing the past couple of weeks and uh, walk you through it, give some commentary, and hopefully you'll pick up some tips if you're interested in sort of incorporating some of this stuff into your own playing. Okay, so the topic of the day is going to be uh, major arpeggios. I'm going to pick G major just in one key. And I'm going to do the G major arpeggio in open position, in, and then also in each of the caged chord shapes going up the fretboard, right? Now I have separate lessons explaining the caged shapes. No matter which key you're in, the idea is that you can play bar chords, scales, arpeggios in different predictable shapes up the fretboard. And for every key, they follow the same pattern. So you learn the pattern once and then you can use it in every key. Right? All you have to do is figure out where to start, where your root notes are, but that's a very, very manageable thing to do. So let me walk you through here. I'm gonna zoom in uh, and show you my guitar up close. I'm gonna have some graphics on the screen. If you do wanna get this printout, uh, it shows you all the graphics I'm gonna use in this video as one single uh, PDF you can get. You can use it in your own practicing. It's over on my website, um, available to members. Uh, thanks to all of you who are supporting me with membership. Uh, members also get access to all my non-song PDFs. I have a whole a library of hundreds of instructional cheat sheets and PDFs. Now, they're separate from my song sheets. My song sheets are available for separate purchase for copyright and licensing reasons. But if you're a member on my site, you get a 50% discount code. Into the Mystic is coming next, so look out for that one next week there. Uh, but let's get into this one. Let me zoom in here, uh, my guitar, and I have a screen share where I'm going to show you some graphics here. Okay, so let's see how this works here. All right. I got my title screen. Now, first of all, arpeggios. If you're not familiar with what an arpeggio is, what it is not, right? If I played a G major chord like this. Okay, that is an arpeggiated strum or an arpeggiated picking of the G major chord, right? But I would not call that a strict arpeggio, right? I would think instead, if you see on the screen right now, Think of arpeggios like a scale where there's a formula you follow. So right on the screen right here, you have the major scale. Okay, I went through scale degrees, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then they repeat it one. Then you have the major pentatonic. And if you notice, this is just the major scale, but you get rid of the four and you get rid of the seven. So it takes this, this is the major scale. And it turns it into this. Okay, you see how those, those notes I played in the major pentatonic are all in the major scale. And then likewise, the major arpeggio is built with the one or the root. The, the root, when I say root, it's another word for the one and, and vice versa, right? The one, the three, and the five. Okay, that's just the one, the three, the five, the one. Now, um, again, I would think of arpeggios in this, in this sort of way. And the reason why is once we get into some of the more complicated chord types, I'm not gonna do it in this lesson, but there are other types of arpeggios, right? There is the major arpeggio. There is a major seventh arpeggio, right? One, three, five, seven, one. Okay, there is the dominant seventh, which is a major triad, like I did, one, three, five, with a flat seven. And you could even get into a minor seventh arpeggio, right? Um, or I, I even skipped minor. Do I have minor on here? Yeah, a minor arpeggio would be one flat three five one, right? And then a minor uh, um, a minor seventh would be one flat three five flat seven one. Okay. Um, really quick, just a reason it, arpeggios are worth knowing is if a chord is being played, if your friend is playing the G major chord, for example, and you want to play along, but you don't want to just copy exactly what he's doing, you could play the G major arpeggio anywhere on the fretboard, and it's going to be 100% chord tones from that G major scale. So it's going to give you a way to surefire sound 100% good uh, with what you're playing with. But I'm going to cover that in a separate lesson. So again, today we're in G major. Um, all the numbers you're about to see on the fretboard, they represent the scale degree of each note, okay? And I, I bring this up a lot in a lot of my videos. You can think of these as intervals. Uh, the main idea is from key to key, these notes change, right? The notes in every scale are different, but the scale degrees, the pattern is the same, and the melodies we create with scale degrees are consistent, right? If you play one, three, four, five, in any key, it's gonna give you when the saints go marching in, right? Um, so it, that's why I am a big fan of scale degrees, because it makes learning the guitar a lot easier, in my opinion. So let's go down to um, the fretboard. Now, if we looked at the G major scale across the fretboard, it's a bunch of notes. And if we looked at even the arpeggios, it's 
you know, it, it's ones and threes and fives, but this is kind of a lot to take in. So what we're gonna do is break it into these different positions, okay? So we're gonna look at the open position first, then we're gonna go to the E shape, right? Because you, you see these three notes right here? This is what you would play for an E major, the three, they match where you would do for an E major open chord. Then after that one, we're gonna go down to the uh, D shape, right? Because what you would play for a D, you just, that's what you get with these notes right here. Um, and then vice versa, here's the C shape, we'll do that one, and then we'll do the A shape. If this whole cage system is new to you, I have a few lessons on it. Check out lesson 384, 385. I explain it with some handy printouts, it's worth knowing. But I'm gonna play arpeggios in each of these shapes, and I'm gonna show you this cool technique I use, which I kinda um, think of as a bounce. I'm gonna play the arpeggio with a bounce, where instead of just going through the notes from you know uh, lowest root note to highest root note and back again, like, you know, I could do that, right? Okay, that's me starting on the lowest root note, right? The lowest one, one, three, five, one, three, five, one. You could do it that way. I found that a bit uh, boring, to be honest, and like an uninspiring. And here's the technique I'm gonna use, right? It's think of it as three steps forward. Then you're gonna take a break and you're gonna go back one step, repeat the previous note, and then do three steps forward again. Okay, one, five, three, five, three, one, three, one, five, one. Okay, let me do it without talking here. The point of doing this is it kind of slows things down. It gives you that, that break. you, I don't know, it helps you just, it helps me internalize the position a bit more. Now I'll say open position arpeggios on an electric guitar, I kind of like am extra insecure about. And the reason why is those open strings. See how they keep ringing when I take my hand away, right? There's a lot of open just buzzing of strings. When later on we get to these other shapes, that's coming next, it's a bit easier to manage because you don't have the open strings buzzing. But that's gonna be the first one. So let me do it again. practice and it's okay if I make mistakes. I don't want to rush forward though and keep repeating my mistakes. I will say this. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, here's what I'm doing. I'm silencing the string sometimes. See how I'm silencing the strings? I'm just lightly touching my hand so that it kills the sound. If you see me doing that, that's why. Let me do this one more time till I feel we have a good thing. Then we're going to move on to the next shape, okay? with that one let's get to the next one I, again open position is kind of a weakness of mine um, let's get to the E shape here so if I just played them individually now I'm gonna I'm gonna um, mimic back to you something Justin Sanderko says in his arpeggio 101 lesson which is you don't want to just put your hand in the shape even if you're following these notes right one three Five, one, three, five, one. He, uh, Justin says not to do that. I'm gonna trust Justin because I, I generally do. But I also think the reason he probably says that is because the whole point of this is getting the agility of your fingertips, giving it some exercise, right? If you're just putting your hand in a chord shape like this, you're really limiting your options as far as adding flourish or whatever, okay? So uh, let's do the pattern now. Let me do it one more 
more time. I was a little bit messy there. So for context, the hardest part of this one is going to be going from this five to the one to the three. Because it's with the, your probably your two weakest fingers, your ring and your pinky. Okay, let's try it one more time. Got it. All right. Let's go to the next uh, the next shape here. Now, okay. What is the next shape? Think of caged. Think of the word caged. Caged. Right. What is after e? It's going to be caged. D D D. So the D shape is next. And these two notes, actually these three notes right here, if you can see my mouse, these are included in the next shape. Okay. Oh, I forgot the three. Good thing that I know how to do this really quick. All right, I just am so familiar with this shape. Um, I know it's, I know it's there. So <laughs> I got to account for it. All right, so here we are between frets. Um, warts and all, yo. Uh, oh man. All right, there we go. There we go. We are, we shall not be defeated here. We are between fret four and eight. Now this is kind of a gnarly shape. There's no real obvious bar chord you can play here, uh, but let's get into it. So seventh is where we start, okay? Now the hardest part about this one, okay? Number one, your root note is relatively uh, pretty high up. It's on the fourth string. Okay. Now the root to the third, pretty straightforward. This third to the fifth, though, it is a jump on the same string, right? Third string from fourth to seventh fret. You can. I like to use my ring because you need your pinky on that next note. And just like I said in the previous shape. Uh, You know how I talked about this part being really hard? On this shape, I find that part to be the hardest, okay? I've practiced this quite a bit in the last month or two, honestly, so I'm, I'm familiar with it, but don't let it uh, throw you off. Again, I'll do it one note at a time. Okay, and now let's do the pattern, the bounce. trick with this one, I will tell you, is it is satisfying to end on the root note. So if we end down here on this three, you might want to come back up to the one. Uh, right? So if we come down from the top. We could go up to the root note. But what you also could do is from this three, we could go five, three, and where's the one if we go down? Well, it's right there because it was in the previous shape, remember? And another trick is that anytime you're on a major third, okay, you go down a whole step to the major second and another whole step to the root, okay? So the root and the major third are always four frets away. So we could do this whole arpeggio if we add in the third fret, which is a root note, That's wrong. Okay, nice little 
trick there to sort of get that satisfying root note on the low end. Okay, let's move to the next shape. Okay, caged. What's after D in caged? Well, it just repeats again, right? Caged, and then it, at the D connects to the C. You're gonna see this triangle right here. Seven, eight, seven. This is inside of the next shape, okay? C shape, seventh through 10th fret. Okay, here's our root note. Uh, lowest root note, fifth string, 10th fret, okay? Now, if we did start on the lowest root note, we went up, right? One, three, five, one, three, five. Then go back down, five, three, one, five, three, one, okay? And then five, three, let's keep on going down. One, okay? So on the sixth string, your G major, one, three, five, is third fret, seventh fret, 10th uh, fret, right? 3, 7, 10. That is your G, your B, your D. Or if you go by intervals, it's your root, your third, your fifth. Okay? So let's do the bounce on this one. Uh, yeah, that is the C shape. Now, what is after C? Encaged. It is the A shape. And in the A shape, this uh, far right two rows, or columns, sorry, are going to be repeated, okay? See that A shape here? And it's called the A shape again. Because all, these, all these cage shapes get their name after the open chord whose shape resembles what we see here. Think of the A major chord as having three notes in a row, right? And then you have a root note that's one string thicker and two frets up. And if you just imagine your, the nut of your guitar is your index finger, and, and that's where you play the three notes in a row, and you just move that whole shape up. Okay, this is an A shape G major chord. Okay, lowest root note. Fifth string, um, tenth fret. I'll just do the notes one at a time. The lowest root note up and then all the way to the bottom and then back to the root note. Oh, keep going down, right? Right, so. Okay, now let's do the bounce. And there is one more shape, y'all. It is the G shape. Now, the G shape, all these shapes, whatever is on the far right of any shape is included in the next shape. So those three in a row in the A, they are on the far left of the G. So I have to zoom out a little bit here to make this work, but just this is the G shape. Now, I'm including this one. You might be thinking, hey, didn't you do the G shape up here? Is an open position the same thing? It kind of is. See, I'm a lot more confident at it now. But the difference is in the open position, you're leveraging open strings and you can't do that up here. That's why it's worth practicing this. Okay, so 15th fret of the low E string is our G note. Okay, if we play the notes one at a time. Okay, and let's do the bounce. back down okay that is the G shape now here's what we're gonna do next um, I'm gonna put on a, a, a drum track that is going to um, play in the background here and let me see if I can get this right and the drum track is going to um, give you some rhythm that we can play over. Let's see if this works here. If I turn off this sound. Okay, hey, you hear that? So, 
But really quick, let's talk about goals. I don't know if y'all can see my, my garage band right now, sorry. Um, oh man, I lost my camera. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through all the shapes, but we're gonna do it in a row without stopping. And I'm actually going to test my luck and just leave this up. And I'm gonna use my understanding and previous study of all the shapes to th sort of go through one shape at a time and go all the way to the top and maybe all the way back down again. And my goal would be to do this without messing up. If I mess up, I wanna repeat the shape. And if I, if I mess up the shape more than two or three times in a row, I need to just do more practice, okay? But this drum track is at 72 beats per minute. That was what a, what a good tempo was for me earlier. Let's see if this works here. When I'm recording, it's always a little bit intimidating. Uh, so your, our, my, mail, my mileage may vary. But if you can do all these in a row and then maybe back down, it's just a really great way to um, test yourself and, and, and put your uh, progress to test, okay? Let's turn that drum track on and let's go, y'all. All right. Let's go back down. I've never actually done this before. Is there a graceful way to get down? If this is the one, this is the five. I'm trying to keep the groove. That means this is the three right here. I guess I can go like this. Right? That's a good way to sort of combine the arpeggios. We did it. I'm gonna um, <clears throat> pause the drum. 
Hey there. Okay, so we did it. How how long were we looking? I hit record, didn't I? Okay, good. Wow, long one. Um, okay, we made it to the end there. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. I definitely felt more confident as I went on. For example, me doing um, that open arpeggio. At the beginning, I was messing up. It is hard with the bounce, though. I think maybe I was trying too much to worry about silencing the strings. Uh, my point is though, when you go through something like this, you spend more than a few minutes on it, it really, it, you'll, you'll notice a difference. And then if you do it every day, like I might say I do this tomorrow and I pick C major, right? I do this shape first, the open position. Then I would go to C in cage connects to A. This is the A shape C. Right, and then A connects to G, right? Uh, that's G, and then the G shape connects to E, etc. So that's all the C major arpeggio, but hopefully what I just did in the last minute makes it clear that it's all the same patterns. Once you kind of get used to these patterns, uh, for any specific arpeggio, I just showed you the major arpeggio, the same, you use those same shapes for every key. So then it's like, oh man, so you learn the patterns once, you can apply them everywhere, but there is a separate skill you also need of wayfinding, right? So say someone's playing, hey, we're in the key of F, and I know I wanna do, say, a riff using that A-shaped chord in F major, I'd have to think, well, F is eight, 10, 10, 10, so 10, 10, 10 is the, is, is the, <laughs> I tried to pull something out of my, out of my uh, empty bag of tricks there. Um, but my point is, learn the shapes once. You can just use them in everywhere, all over the place, right? But wayfinding, you know, uh, using a certain position in a certain key is its own little skill. But it's way easier to learn that than to memorize five different, totally different shapes for all the 12 different major keys. And then repeat that whole thing for minor and major seventh and all that stuff. So, um yeah, I hope this is helpful, y'all. Uh, let me know if you find this kind of thing helpful. I'm practicing anyway. I want to share more on YouTube, even if it's more raw stuff. So um, let me know what kind of topics you might be uh, interested in. And I do want to do a separate video or course or whatever on, on explaining more about arpeggios and explaining how to use them and everything, because there's a, there's a great deal of stuff you can do. Um, but yeah, the cool thing is also, I'll, I'll say really quick, is I just showed you the G major arpeggios all up and down the fretboard. Remember that slide I showed at the beginning? where I talked about the major scale, the pentatonic scale, and arpeggios, all those shapes I just taught you, right? That D shape, that gnarly D shape. What I taught you there, you can use when you're learning the D major pentatonic. I'm kind of, I don't know if that's, that's correct or not. Um, yeah, but, but basically these same cage shapes will work for major scales and for your major pentatonic scale. So that's the whole cool thing is that all these things are connected. Spending time with even one specific uh, implementation of any one, like major arpeggios and caged, is going to help you out next time you practice major scales and caged or uh, the major pentatonic shapes using caged, right? Uh, so yeah, hope that's helpful for y'all. I'm going to leave now. Um, if you all want this these mapped out for you. You can get them. Uh, the link is in the description or over at songnotes.net. This will be lesson 514. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great Labor Day weekend, everybody. I am um, excited to have a good one. We've had a busy week here. School's back in session. Really busy uh, with new schedule for taking the kids here and there. Um, but I'm excited to have a holiday weekend coming up. It's Labor Day for all of you watching in the future. But um, yeah, thanks. I'll see you all. Take care. And until next time, my friends, bye-bye. All right.